So in yesterday's video, we just broke out what's a great real estate deal versus what's a good real estate deal. A great real estate deal is going to have all four of these factors. A good real estate deal is going to probably have three of these factors. But how should you know which factors to focus on or which are most important to you as a real estate investor? Well, it really depends on your long-term plan. So let's jump into it and I'll explain to you, depending on where you're at in life and what your plans are, which one of these real estate factors you should prioritize. Here's scenario one of priorities. We got low no money down, cash flow appreciation and paying the ass factor. Any guesses to who this probably outlines as a real estate investor? Well, in my opinion, this is great for beginners. So why is this a great strategy for beginners? Well, most beginners aren't going to have a lot of capital. So if you don't have a lot of capital, but you want to grow your portfolio fast, you need to really focus on low or no money down properties. Secondly, as a beginner, you're going to want strong cash flow so you can keep re-qualifying for mortgages. Thirdly, as a beginner, appreciation can be great because that... Thirdly, as a beginner, appreciation is great because it gives you the opportunity to refinance and get even more capital out. And so as a beginner, if you want a good or great real estate deal, you're going to be focused on low, no money down, cash flow, appreciation, and paying the ass factor last. <clears throat> and so why is paying the ass factor less important to a beginner? Well, to be honest, if you want to build a portfolio fast, you need access to tons of capital. And so if you're not going to use partners, if you're not going to use other people's money, you need to really prioritize in this manner as a beginner real estate investor. So which properties jump to mind if you're looking for low or no money down, cash flow appreciation, but you're not too concerned about paying the ass factor? Well, burrs can be great for a beginning investor because a burr that's executed perfectly will result in no money down once you refinance it. As long as you did the burr appropriately, you should still be meeting the 1% rule, which means you'll have cash flow. Third, you've done the forced appreciation, which allowed you to access the lower no money down. And finally, your pain in the ass factor is probably a little bit higher because you had to do renovations at the start. And if you're really focused on getting it to lower no money down and getting maximum appreciation, you were hunting for great deals on used materials wherever possible, as well as maybe even doing some of the work yourself. And so that's why I think burrs are a great strategy for beginner investors. Because with the burr, you're gonna get access to your capital really fast. Because you're gonna be able to grow your money faster than other investors that reprioritize these four factors because you're gonna be able to reuse that capital again and again and again, potentially in the same year even. So what's the difference between someone that's a beginner in real estate that's looking to grow their portfolio fast versus someone that's looking to reach financial independence and retire early at a young age? So the person that's focused on fire, they're gonna want high cash flow so that they can replace their job income, so they can supplement the income that they're actively earning with something that's more passive. Now these next two points, you could really debate. I think it could go either way. But the key is for someone that's focused on financial independence, retire early. If you don't have access to a lot of capital, low or no money down is going to be the next important so that you can get more cash flow in properties. However, if you have access to a lot of capital, you're probably going to be more focused on having a lower pain in the ass factor because you want to be retired. You want to become financially independent. And part of being financially independent or retired early isn't having to always stress out over having terrible tenants or other issues like that. Finally, appreciation is less important to the person that's trying to reach financial independence, retire early, because they're not really looking for those capital gains. They're not worried about being in an extremely high tax bracket because they're replacing their job income with cash flow. And so what properties kind of meet the standard for the person that's looking for financial independence, retired early? Well, again, I think burrs can be a great opportunity as well as just really strong cash flowing properties. So why might a property be really strong in cash flow? Well, it may be in a low appreciation area. So that may be something like a student rental. Now, student rental may have a higher pain in the ass factor. So that's a trade off you're going to have to become aware of. Alternatively, you could be focusing on burr properties and maybe B or C class neighborhoods. And so the reason for that is those birds are going to have higher cash flow because you're probably dealing with a slightly lower grade of tenant. However, if you build the right systems in place and are really careful with screening your tenants, you can still get that great cash flow without having to have a high pain in the ass factor. And so let's say you're not focused on financial independence, retire early, and you're not looking to grow a massive portfolio fast as a beginner real estate investor. What should you be prioritizing if say you're a high income earner and you plan to retire at a traditional retirement age? Well, in that case, I think you should really focus on getting properties that are going to appreciate well, properties that have a low ping in the ass factor, and you may not be less focused on low or no money down, and cash flow is not gonna be important. So why would this individual focus on this approach or prioritizing in this manner? Well, to me, it really comes down to appreciation. 
The reason that appreciation's good is because of capital gain. And so currently in Canada, capital gains are treated more favorably for taxes versus active income. So as a high income earner, you're less focused on cash flow because it's gonna be taxed at your highest marginal rate. Whereas once you hit retirement and say you sell off your real estate properties, that capital gains is gonna be taxed at a much lower rate than the active income from cash flow would be. Secondly, if you're a high income earner and you're focused on retiring at a traditional age, you probably want a very low pain in the ass factor simply because you're focused on your day job. You don't want to be distracted by your side hustle or your real estate portfolio. And thirdly, depending on your position, you may be focused on lower no money down so you can increase the amount of assets you control. Again, I think these two could be really be debated on which one you want first. And even these two could be debated depending on the exact situation you find yourself in as a person focused on traditional retirement and a high income earner. So what properties will make sense for this person? Well, you're going to be focused on properties that have a high potential towards appreciation. So maybe you're buying in neighborhoods that are currently gentrifying, but it's going to be a five, 10 or 20 year horizon. Maybe you're buying in neighborhoods where you know rapid transit is going to go, but it may take five, 10 or 20 years for rapid transit to get there. As well, you may focus on major metro areas where you think that long term cities that were once just cities are going to become world class cities. So maybe you're buying in markets like Toronto or Vancouver. And even though those may seem overpriced today, you believe that long term over a long time horizon of say 20 years that's still gonna be worth more tomorrow than it is today again those of you that are familiar with my real estate investing strategy know that this is not my approach but it can be a valid approach as long as you've done your homework and you trust in your numbers so yeah what do you guys think uh, do you agree with kind of the way I prioritize these for the different individuals if you disagree or agree jump in the comment section down below. I love it when you guys share your opinions with me. Let me know also if there's other videos you'd like me to do because I'm always open to your suggestions. And until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money out there for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point? Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Oh, also, YouTube wants you to check out the videos down below. Thanks.